and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our giant thank you messages and its coordinating die. So let's go ahead and check it out. We're going to start off by stamping out the giant thank you and I love this sentiment so much. These are really great because you can just stamp them out on your card or you can die cut them later and I'll show you how the die works in just a little bit. Now we're stamping out the I'm so grateful for you that is absolutely gorgeous. And then there's a longer sentiment in the set that says thanks a bunch. And then we also have these little extra elements that are fun for adding around these large sentiments. So we have these little like leafy filigree items. And then this fun little one that I really like stamping on either side of the longer sentiment. It looks really, really nice that way. And then we also have an individual flower too. Now I'm gonna use my Copic markers to color in these fun images. And for this thank you, of course, you can just stamp it on its own in a black ink or maybe a fun color of ink like a pink or a green. You can also heat emboss these too, but it's also really fun to add color to them. And so in this case, I'm doing kind of like a fun pastel rainbow. And of course we came out with these sentiments around fall and Thanksgiving because I feel like they go so nicely for the season. But the other great thing about them is they're perfect for year round too, for year round thank you cards or just to let someone know that you're thinking of them. They're so awesome. So that's why I wanted to do this fun rainbow pastel-y color palette to show how pretty this could be for spring. Could you imagine with some pretty floral paper in the background? It would just be stunning. And so I really love adding some color to like the little kind of elements around the outside and then also to the inside of the letters. And then what I like to do is take a really light BG marker or a blue marker too. And I'm just going to go around all of those fun little things. And you can see as as I, as I kind of trace those lines, they almost just pop and become three dimensional. And it's so easy to do. It's really fun too to trace them. And I think it just looks so, so pretty. Next, we're gonna start coloring in the I'm so grateful for you. And in this case, we're gonna do a fun fall theme with our colors, but you can see how you could easily change up the colors to have this work for any season. And I was inspired by Elise from our design team to color the way she colored in all of these images, which was so pretty. So we're doing this bright kind of neon -y green that's just gorgeous. And then we're gonna bring in some oranges and blues for a really beautiful color palette. So now here you'll see what we have the oranges and I'm just putting my dark and then medium and then light on some of the smaller little openings, I'll just do the darkest one and the lightest one because it's a little bit too much to bring in all of the markers. And so I'm just going to go around and keep filling in these colors. And there's no right or wrong way to add color to these. They look gorgeous no matter which colors you mix and match. We've played around with a bunch and they are just awesome. So now that we've got our orange, I'm going to add in some yellow and you'll see as we add in the yellow, it really just brightens up the whole thing. And then as I color in the flowers on the I'm so grateful for you image, I'm going to color in the individual flower to match as well. And so then we'll just add a little bit of color to those flowers. And then my favorite thing about this color palette is bringing in this blue that Elise brought in. It just makes the whole thing feel so special. And I loved it so much. And those markers were on my desk that I thought it would be fun to do a little colorful pattern on this thanks a bunch. This looks really cute, just stamp plain. But what I love about these letters is that they're really, really fun to color in. So I'm using that same exact color palette and I think it just looks so fun and so pretty. I'm just adding a little bit of shading to the side of the letters and then just blending out with the medium and light markers. And then I decided to use those same markers to color in these little images here on the side because I thought it was nice that they all kind of matched and coordinated together. Now that we've colored in these images, I wanted to show you a comparison with some heat embossing, which is my other favorite way to use these images. So we've heat embossed in gold and in silver, and isn't that just stunning? It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a little bit quicker than coloring them in if you wanted to mass produce some cards, and they look so, so pretty with the heat embossing powder. I think the rose gold heat embossing powder would be really pretty too. And then here is a nice comparison between the ones we used markers with, and then the ones that we did the heat embossing. These are the coordinating dies for the stamp set, which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. And the coordinating dies for these are really awesome and a bit unique. So it has this beautiful dotted oval that lines up perfectly with the images. And we also have dies to line up with the cute little leaves and flowers as well. And so it's gonna die cut this thank you or the I'm so grateful for you with this really beautiful dotted border. The cool thing about all of the dies for all of our giant messages sets, we have birthday and holiday 
holiday and all these different sets is that you can mix and match the dies together. So this die can be used with the previous sets and the previous sets coordinating dies can be used with this. And we'll be showing you that in a card in just a little bit. Now here you can see how you can kind of layer the different images together. I love those little filigrees. You can kind of layer it behind the flowers. They just look so pretty together. And then here is a comparison again, all die cut between our heat embossed versions and our ones that we color with markers. I love that they have totally different looks and they're just so beautiful and so gorgeous. And now I'm ready to make four simple cards, which is really great. And so we're gonna make one of those cards right now. So this is what I was talking about earlier. This is our giant holiday messages. And this is the die that comes with that. It's a scalloped oval with a little dotted detail. Well, you can mix and match the dies for these. So there we've cut that out of some gold metallic cardstock. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the I'm so grateful for you that we die cut with the coordinating die for that one. And we can layer these two together, which looks so pretty. So it gives you this great frame. The other thing to note is the giant thank you messages die. Well, it can cut out the giant holiday messages die or any of the other giant messages. So I love that you can mix and match these so well for a bunch of different looks. Also, the coordinating die is just a great oval. So you could stamp a little scene in there or something. It's just a nice die cut to have. So here we're going to add some foam tape to the back of the I'm so grateful for you and we're going to layer that onto this gold metallic oval and once again we're recreating this card by Elise. Oh I love it so much. So we're going to layer that on there. And then we're gonna add some foam tape to the back of this as well. This is a relatively simple card, so by adding the foam, it's just gonna give it a special little pop. Now here is the nitpicky winter paper, and although they're great for winter, they're also really cute for kind of fall theme cards too. So we're gonna use this cream colored knit paper, and we're gonna die cut that with the largest of the outside in stitched rectangles. Then here we have a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter, and we're just gonna layer that pattern paper right on top. I just love the look of that knit paper with the little white border on the outside. That white cardstock is gonna kind of match the white cardstock we have on the I'm so grateful for you. And so we're gonna layer that on there with that little foam tape behind it. And then we're gonna take some of the individual images in the set. So those cute little flowers and the little like leafy filigree kind of items. And we're gonna layer those a little bit tucked behind the oval. So we're gonna add a flower and then some fun little leaves. And so some of them I'm putting behind the oval and then some we're actually gonna put behind the scalloped oval and that's going to give it a nice dimension to have pieces kind of in front and behind and then we're going to repeat the same thing kind of like at the diagonal it just gives it a nice little frame around the oval and so we're going to layer those pieces just like that and now this adorable simple card is all done it feels so special it just makes me smile I just love it so much and I wanted to do a little comparison to another grateful card that Rebecca from our team made and it has these beautiful stripes and some fall leaves. So it's a really fun combo where you can see how they're a bit similar, but we just did some inking on that one. We stamped in some brown ink. We inked up some stitched leaves and it just has this beautiful, really fall feel that's just stunning. Now for our next card, we were inspired by Yanea to create a teacher themed card. So here we have our just stitching rectangles. So these just stitch, they don't cut. We already trimmed our piece of black licorice cardstock down. And so we're just gonna line this up in the center and it's gonna add this really cool stitching detail that's gonna give it this chalkboard feel that looks really, really cool already. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some heat embossing on white on this cardstock to make it look like the thank you was written with chalk. So right now we're gonna ink up with some clear embossing ink and we'll stamp down on our cardstock. Then we can sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder, heat it up with our heat tool and get a nice bright white shiny sentiment. Then since we're creating a thank you card for a teacher, we're gonna go with the classic image of the red apple. So we're gonna use some apples from the Build a Barrel Apple die set. And we're also gonna be using the apple from the Reveal Wheel Apple add-on. It's really cool to use the apple without the Reveal Wheel too. So we're gonna die cut a bunch of these apples. We're die cutting those out of some chili pepper cardstock. And then we've got the inside of those Reveal Wheel apples out of some vanilla malt cardstock. And we're gonna die cut the little seed one that comes with the Reveal Wheel apple. We're going to line that up in the center and you'll see it's going to die cut these little like seed pieces and we're going to do that on both of these. Once we have those little seeds die cut, what we're going to do is just trim down a little piece of black cardstock and we're going to layer it behind that piece and that's what's going to fill in those little seeds and it's just a really cool look. 
Then to hold the frame and the interior piece together, we're actually just going to use a little piece of low tack tape on the back to hold them in place. So this die was originally meant to work with the reveal wheel. So this is a fun way to get the die to work without the reveal wheel. And just a little bit of tape is going to hold them in place. So we're going to take that tape, line up the frame and the inside of the apple, and that tape is just going to hold those pieces. And we can do that for both of these apples. Our next step is then to layer the stems and the leaves into the apple. So we're going to add some liquid glue on the stems and then we're going to layer on our cilantro green cardstock there that we've die cut the leaves from. And then what we can do is we can take these stems and leaves and we can add them to the apples. And the apples that are die cut from the build of barrel have this cute little opening in them and you can just tuck those leaves inside and it looks adorable. And then of course we'll layer the leaf on top for our sliced apples. Then we're going to take these apples and we're going to layer them on to our little chalkboard that we created. So we're going to layer some of the full apples in the background and then the sliced apples up front. And I really like the mixture of the two. It looks so cute. And the reviewable apple gives you a different size of apple, which is really awesome as well. So we're going to layer all of these pieces on and you can kind of see this chalkboard start to form. For the background of the card, we're going to take out Gotta Have Gingham Rainbow, and it has this great bright green that's going to match the bright green that we have on the leaves. And I really like how it's going to kind of coordinate everything together. So we're going to add some foam squares to the back of our chalkboard, and then we're going to layer that onto the pattern paper. And then we can take a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some tape runner onto that, and then we can layer the whole thing on top. For a little extra fun detail, we're going to take out some lawn trimmings. This is the peppermint style that's a red and white. I love lawn trimmings because they're made out of hemp, so when you tie a bow, it really keeps the bow's shape because it's a little bit sturdier of a twine. So here we're going to tie a bow, and you'll see once it's all tied that you really have this like nice bow that's going to hold its shape in the corner of the card. We're going to use a glue tot to put the little bow there in the corner, and then we can just trim off any of the excess of the bow. Now once our bow is in place, it's time to really make this look like a chalkboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some Yeti ink, which is a white pigment ink. I'm going to put it on my finger there really lightly. And then I'm just going to smear that ink onto the cardstock, really messy, and that's what's going to give it this cool chalkboard look. So you see I'm just picking up a little bit of ink and kind of smearing it. Now next I picked up a little bit too much ink, so when I did that I just kind of rubbed my fingers together to make sure the ink wasn't too wet and you want it kind of dry, right? And then I'm just going to smear it over the cardstock, just kind of like around the edges, around the sentiment a little bit, and there's something about that smudgy look that really makes it feel like a chalkboard in a classroom, and I think it just makes the whole thing feel really, really special. And so now this card is all done, it's so super cute, so fun, and I love that you can use the sentiment with with and without dies. And here's a fun comparison to some other thank you cards that we created. We have another apple barrel card that we created in our first inspiration week. And then we recently created the really fun wintry card there on the side too. So I love that this thank you can be year round. It's cute for teacher stuff. And it's also cute for wintry cards too. And speaking of wintry cards, Shari is going to create the most gorgeous card next. So take it away, Shari. I'm creating a card with the thank you very much stamp from the giant thank you messages stamp set and I'm going to go for a wintry look with today's card. So I am going to emboss this sentiment onto a piece of peacock cardstock. I'm using Yeti ink to stamp that down and then I will be embossing this with the new unicorn sparkle embossing powder. So this embossing powder is white, but also has that really fun glittery sparkle to it. So I'm going to heat this up with my heat tool, and I am going to heat it up from the back side mostly because I found that that works best for this particular embossing powder, especially because it has that glitter in it. So you can see there as it starts to melt and it gets even brighter white, you get that white sparkly sentiment on that darker cardstock. And then I'm going to use the coordinating die for this stamp set that cuts this out. This cuts an oval with some dotted piercing detail around the outside edge. So I'm just lining that up. I'll run that through my die cut machine and then I have a completed sentiment panel. Now for the background of my card, I'm using Moon Dust Glimmer Foil. 
and I'm going to use the Snowflake background hot foil plate. While my platform is getting ready over there, I'm just going to cut my foil to be bigger than my plate. And now that my platform is ready, I can lay that plate on there and I'll push the timer button and the light will start to blink. Once that light goes solid and is no longer blinking, I'm ready to foil. So I want to put the pretty side down onto my foiling plate. Then I will put my cardstock, which I'm going to be using some mermaid cardstock for this. I just went ahead and pulled my platform out of the base. Then I'm going to put the plate and the shim, and then I'll run this through my die cut machine. So once that pressure has been applied through that die cut machine, I can peel off the foil and I have this beautiful background with that aqua iridescent shimmery snowflake on that mermaid cardstock and I just think that's so pretty. Now I'm going to use the largest outside in stitch rectangle to cut a panel for my card out of this foiled piece of cardstock. So I'm just lining that up, making sure I've got my snowflakes all in that square and I'll cut that out. Now I'm going to add this to my card base. I've cut my card base from some fog cardstock, so it's that very pale gray color. And I'll get that border of that very pale gray all the way around. Now back to my sentiment panel I created earlier. This stamp has a lot of nice open areas that you could color in. For this one, since I embossed it on a darker color of cardstock, I decided just to pick one color of colored pencil and color in some of those openings in the sentiment and around the sentiment. I also pulled out a piece of sheer ribbon from my stash and I thought this would be really pretty to add to it. It's a very pale pink color and I like that it's sheer. It kind of gives it that wintry look that I'm going for. I'm just tying that on the side and that will just be to the left of my oval. So I've got it tied and I'm just shifting it over so that it'll be on the left side once that oval is centered. I'm going to add some foam squares all over this oval piece and I'm just adding a dot of glue to those four squares that go through the center because those are going to be on top of that ribbon and I want to make sure it sticks down really well. And then I'll just center this up on the card. Now I can trim off the extra ends of that ribbon that are too long. And I'm pulling out my sparkle glaze pin and just adding a little bit more glitter to those areas that I colored with the colored pencil, just as a little glittery accent. And here is my finished thank you card. I really love that moon dust foil in the background. I think it's so pretty and I love that unicorn sparkle embossing as well. Oh my goodness, Shari. I love how sparkly and pretty this is. The unicorn sparkle embossing powder looks gorgeous with the hot foil too. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And when I saw this card by Grace, my jaw dropped. It is absolutely stunning. And I love how the I'm so grateful for you fits so well on our outside in stitched pumpkin. It's absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait to make one just like it. Next up, Callie used some beautiful springy colors with the giant thank you, and it's absolutely so beautiful and so fun for spring. This card by Megan just blew me away. I love how she heat embossed on vellum, and that beautiful blue on the background is just stunning. These sentiments are really great for scene cards too, and here Tammy created the cutest little scenes with her pups playing in the leaves. This card by Mindy is so fun. I love those stripes, and those colors are just gorgeous against the bright white background. And then here, Letitia used some springy colors as well, and I love that scallop frame and how she die cut so many of the flowers in the set. This card by Rebecca is so fun, and those leaves make it feel so perfect for fall and Thanksgiving. And then I love this card by Lynette and the beautiful fall colors that she used as well, and how she combined the I'm so grateful for you with the thanks a bunch. This card is so sweet by Audrey. I love that barrel of apples and how she inked them all and the thanks a bunch is a perfect sentiment. And then here is the card by Yanea that inspired us to make ours today. It's just so fun and so cute. And then here is a really fun card by Kara where she stacked all these pumpkins in a beautiful pumpkin patch with this great wood grain texture. And then here is the card by Elise that inspired us to make ours today. It's just so beautiful. 
I love how Maureen, it's named her, I'm so grateful for you over those beautifully inked birch trees. I just love the scene with the bears too. And then this card by Elena is so sweet and I loved how she stamped the whole thing in the background and then she has her apples there in the corner. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with giant thank you messages. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.